Now let's see what happens on a read or a write miss with directory-based coherence. In directory-based coherence, every memory block has associated information with it in the directory. The directory keeps track of where all the copies of the cache blocks are and what states they're in. When a miss occurs, it finds the directory entry and then communicates only with the nodes that have copies. So instead of broadcasting a message to all nodes in the system, it only sends copies to nodes that need to change in some way. In scalable networks, communications with the directory and the copies occurs through network transactions, as we said earlier. Let's assume the directory is distributed with each node holding directory information for the block it contains. So the, the directory at a particular node holds entries for the memory that's located at that node. And this node is called the home node for these blocks. Let's see what happens on a read miss. The first thing that happens over here is that the requesting node, that is the node that's trying to access the memory, sends a request transaction over the network to the home node. In other words, it needs to communicate with the node that the memory is actually resident in. The home node then responds with the identity of the owner, the node that currently holds a valid copy of the block. So just think a bit, what's the difference between the home node and the owner? After this happens, the requesting node then gets the, gets the data from the owner and revises the directory entry accordingly. After this, the requester sends a read request to the owner. The owner replies with the data of the block and adjusts the directory entry accordingly. That is to say that the requester now also has a copy of that block. On a write miss, more transactions may be necessary because the node that's doing the request needs to communicate with all of the nodes that currently have copies, not just one of them. So the first thing that happens is that the requesting node sends a read exclusive request to the directory. Then the directory re replies with the sharer's identity because it knows that for a read exclusive request it's going to have to invalidate all of the sharers. Then the requester sends invalidation requests to each sharer in turn and uh, then waits for the acknowledgments to return from all of them. Again, notice that we need explicit acknowledgments. We can't assume that just because we've asked for an invalidation, the invalidation has been carried out. Similarly, when we write to a block, we can't assume that the write has completed when it leaves the processor. We need to wait for an acknowledgment. Now let's summarize with what information is held in the directory. First, the directory will hold a dirty bit for each block, telling whether that block is, has been modified in some cache. It doesn't need to have all the state information in the directory, only enough to determine which actions to take. In particular, it doesn't need to know whether a block is in state M or state E, because in either case, there's only one copy of it Sometimes the state information in the directory will be momentarily out of date. Think about why. Remember that I said it'll be out of date just momentarily. The reason for that is because the memory has been modified in a cache, but we haven't yet updated the, me the directory entry. So sometimes a directory will send a message to the cache that's no longer correct when it's received. Later on we'll see what happens when a memory Later on we'll see what happens when a message is later on we'll see what happens when such a message is out.